Hello everyone, welcome back to 3D Print Lab. In today's episode, we will be printing a real world object, not a video game though. We'll be printing the Colt 1911. Okay, it's one's location. We're going to go and find this model on Turbo Squid. I was able to find one for free, so that's the one we're going to use. Phase 2 is extraction. So we're going to go, and actually, the first model we did was from Thingiverse. We got a model from Thingiverse, but it ended up being the most corrupt piece of garbage I've ever seen. Although, it was useful because it did give us a correct scale for the actual model. Now we're going to go to coordination, which we're going to add support in order for the model to be able to print correctly. We're going to go to mesh mixer, and we're going to try automatic support. I can tell you right now, that's going to be terrible. That's just not going to work. And so we're going to go into 3ds Max, and we're going to make our own support. And we're just going to use Obelisk support as we've been developing. And make sure that we support everything. And we're just going to array it off, and make sure that it's all supported. And make sure that we support the trigger back here as well. Making sure that each post does indeed touch. There's a very fine line between touching enough and not touching it and touching too much. And we realize that we do indeed need raft, so we're gonna put the raft on there. The raft helps it stick to the build plate. And now phase four is conversion. We're gonna bring it into MakerWare and convert off. But you can see as it goes up here, there's all these holes in the side where the grip is. And that's just terrible. It's never going to print. It's going to be a huge problem. We're going to print it anyway. So we're going to do production. It's going to be iteration one. This print went all right. It started out all right. And it looked like it was good, but I had to leave, so I left my printer unattended for about two hours. And I got a little bit of a surprise when I got back. I got a big spaghetti mess that was all over the inside of my machine. And it got really big and bad. <laughs> anyway, iteration two. Now we're going to go to Turbo Squid, and we're going to find a gun to use. And we'll look around for a little while. Look through some guns. And we were able to actually find the same gun. Eventually. We'll look for a little while. Still trying to find one here. There we go. There's a 1911. So we'll be printing that. It's the same one, bring it in, it's, it's really super small, so we did get the correct scale from the other one. So that's pretty important. You can tell it's the same gun. It's not the same model, it is slightly different. Which is good, because the other one's really screwed up. I'm going to delete the other one, delete all the raft that's already there. I'm going to redo the raft completely. Raft and support. I'm going to manually go through and change things. Making sure that everything is supported. And this time around, we had an issue last time where the support was a little too close to the model. So this time we're going to go make the raft just barely not touch. And in that way, when it goes to print, it will just have something to kind of sit on. And when you derig, when you derig it, it'll just not even snap off, it'll just fall off. And we'll see how well that goes. We're just going to take these and we're going to array them off. And that's not going to be enough. And that's not going to be enough. There we go, I'll array like that. Take these, and those. We're going to need to support these as well. And make sure that these are supported. Trigger supported. Now we're going to select all the supports. And make it all attached all to one object. And we're gonna select all the raft and attach those all to one object. 
That'll make sure that we, we're going to bully these two groups together. That'll make sure that this fort and raft is all one unified object. And then when we go to slice it, it's treated as such. That way it'll print better and there won't be holes in the raft. You get some weird outcomes if you don't delay them together. We're going to bring it back into Mapleware and make sure that we slice at 0 0.3. 200 degrees Celsius, we're working for teal. Works best. We're good at getting the strings. Here it is sliced. You can go through the layers here. And you can see it's going to print off quite nicely. There's no holes in it like the other model. It's super terrible. Pretty much good to go. We're going to go ahead and print it off. It took 3 hours and 14 minutes and took 64 grams of PLA. And a polylactic acid corn based biodegradable plastic. And you can see on the right there it did warp up a little bit, but we do have a special slicing program we can use to make that go away. And if we do do a bit another big model, like a gun or whatever, we will definitely be using slicer to slice it. We'll just be cutting it up into little slices. And here we go, we're de-rigging now. And really all that all that obelisk support just didn't even tear off or break off. It just fell off. Here's a close-up. Let's do a close-up of the trigger area. Here's another close-up. Now, mind you, this is a non-functional model. This is not anything. It doesn't move at all. And I did paint the tip according to 5001 ordinance that say, states that you do need to paint the tips of uh, mock weaponry. Anyway, the Colt line uh, 1911 by Racer 260 and Turbo Squid. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch the introduction. It explains the whole series. The last episode was the Galante Titan. There's the Tiger 2 and there's the Bolo. See you next time.